Children scamper across the deck as families live on top of each other. Their parents lie listless. At the back, a handful of men share a single hose as a shower. This is daily life aboard the Indonesian fishing boat carrying more than 200 Sri Lankan Tamil asylum seekers to Australia. Intercepted by the Indonesian Navy at the request of Australia, and now parked for about two months off the coast of West Java. This video was taken by one of the asylum seekers, Sanjeev Kuhendra Raja. He calls himself Alex. He was raised in Canada, and with his camera and laptop, he has become, he says, a reluctant spokesman. I'm not a leader of this ship, and I'm not God. I cannot save lives. But I just... I'm, we are at the situation, we are at the point where we don't know what to do anymore. Through the trees just behind me there, you can see the boat with the blue tarpaulin. That's where the asylum seekers are. More than 250 of them are on that boat. It's become a national embarrassment for Indonesia. There's so much security here that we can't get any closer. And none of the asylum seekers in the boat want to come off and talk to us because they're afraid they're going to be arrested. Alex claims disease is spreading aboard the boat and access to medical care is minimal. This man had a seizure on board. An ambulance was called to take him to an Indonesian hospital, but another was not so lucky. He died after days of vomiting blood. I tried my best to do whatever I can for this man, and I, I was able to save him, but I wasn't able to save Jacob. I wasn't able to do anything for him, but I did my best. I tried to do whatever I can for him. Indonesia says it is providing food and medical attention, but the asylum seekers not only refuse to leave the boat, they won't allow Indonesian officials on board to assess conditions and process their requests for asylum with the UN High Commission for Refugees. By refusing, they actually do harm to their own people. So why not leave the boat? Well, Alex was convicted of illegal weapons possession in Canada and deported to Sri Lanka. He says a youthful mistake. He has since had run-ins with the Sri Lankan authorities. Now the Sri Lankan government accuses him of being a member of the Tamil Tigers, the terror group fighting for Tamil independence from Sri Lanka. They also say he's a people smuggler. Allegations he denies. But it's just bull**** and I don't understand. What proof do they have of that? And I paid my money. I paid $15,000 to get on his boat. So why would I pay my own money to be a people smuggler and smuggle myself out of a country? And if I wanted to smuggle myself out of a country, I would not bring 250 people along with me. Alex fears leaving the boat will mean deportation and jail back in Sri Lanka. He left behind a wife and four children, hoping to bring them afterwards. He says he deserves a chance at asylum through the UNHCR. What people should understand is uh, the situation in Sri Lanka is more riskier than going to hell itself. I don't know when Tamil people will find peace. I don't know when we will find a country, but... Out of all the things I've went through in my life, I will go as far as it takes to find these 250 people refuge, to find these 250 people a national anthem, and to find these 250 people a country that they can call their own. For Alex and others on this boat, there is still a long journey ahead. Atika Schubert, CNN, Merak, Indonesia.